In this lesson two of cybersecurity training for beginners, I'm going to be dissecting social engineering and also giving you six tips that you can use to spot a phishing message. Now, what is social engineering? Before we define it, did you know that the most common threat organization is dealing with today is social engineering? This is why it is very important for you to be educated about social engineering and their tactics. Now, social engineering is the use of deception to manipulate individuals into divulging confidential or personal information that may be used for fraudulent purposes. Social engineering attacks can be incredibly harmful because of how easy they can be to accomplish. So this is why it is very important to be educated about this subject. Now, when you receive any message that contains these three things, you need to think twice before you act on that message. If the message is making you to feel curious, you know, to act on it, or being generous to respond to somebody out of generosity, or you are feeling excited about the message, then you need to think twice before you actually act on that message. One of the attacks that shook the business world some years ago, and that was in the year 2000. That attack is called the love letter attack. In the year 2000, love letter malware stole internet login credentials. How did this happen? User received an email with the subject line, I love you. Each email contained an attachment label, love letter for you. You can imagine if you receive this kind of message from your contact or one of your contacts, out of the contact that you have on your phone or the contact that you have on your email, you got the message, I love you, and then it contains an attachment, love letter for you. There is this feeling of being curious or excited. Okay, this is a feeling of excitement for you to click on the link and then you want to quickly see what does the letter contain. So when the attachment was opened, the malware scanned a user's address book. Then it automatically sent itself to each person on the list and then installed a program to collect user's information and password. So that was how, what happened in the year 2000. When you click on, when the user click on that particular attachment, it installed the malware, it stored the user's login detail and the password, and then look at the address book as well and forwarded the same message to them, which titled, I love you with the attachment love letter for you. So when the people in your contact, they got that message, they thought that, oh, this message is coming from my contact, is somebody that I know. And the next thing is that they also click on the email and then they click on the link, they click on the attachment, the attachment downloaded the malware on their system, stored the login detail, at the same time forwarded the message again to all their contacts as well. Now you can see the chain of events, how it happened and then how it went. So the love letter ended up infecting about 45 million computers globally and is believed to have caused over $10 billion in damages in the year 2000. So the love letter attack is actually the first example of social engineering that happened in the year 2000. And it was a wake up call. So, you know, after the love letter, attackers understood the power of social engineering, that they could actually make a lot of fortune from there. And they could also see that it is easier for people to actually fall prey to the kind of message that they are sending out. So the number of social engineering attacks has increased with a new social media application that we have today. This social media application allows public access to people's data. Many people are now prioritizing convenience over privacy. The trade-off of this evolving shift is that these tools may lead to increased vulnerability if people do not use them appropriately. As a security analyst that you are watching me right now, you intend to be a security analyst one of your roles will be to identify and manage inappropriate use of technology that may place your organization and all the people associated with it at a risk. Now, we are going to be looking at examples of social engineering. And one of the examples of social engineering is phishing. What is phishing? It is the use of digital communications to trick people into revealing sensitive data or deploy malicious software. When you hear the word malicious software, it means malware. 
So that is exactly what happened with the love letter incident in the year 2000. Today, it is necessary for employees to receive training on how to identify social engineering attacks. There are five common types of phishing that every security analyst should know. I'm going to be explaining the five of them right now with example. The first one that we're going to be talking about is email phishing. This is a type of attack sent via email in which the threat actors send messages pretending to be a trusted person or entity. Let's look at the example of the love letter attack that happened in the year 2000. The recipient thinks that they are receiving it from somebody that they know. As a result of that, there is this curiosity to want to see I love you content that is in that attachment. It's an example of email phishing that happened and it's still happening today. So that is why you need to be educated. And when you are educated as well, you educate other people about this. And then the second one that we're going to be talking about is spear phishing. It's a subset of email phishing in which specific people are purposefully targeted in the organization, such as an accountant of a small business. So they look at specific person. The target now is not everybody. Okay, email phishing is sent to the group, it's sent to everybody. But when it comes to spear phishing, it is targeted towards a particular person in the organization. And then close to the spear phishing is what we call whaling. Whaling is another phishing attempt, which is actually a category of spear phishing. The intention of the whaling is to target an high ranking executive in an organization. So the high ranking can be CEO. Okay, the MDs and then the head of department, that is actually the target because they know if they can get those people, they are definitely going to get, you know, more access to information, especially regarding the organization or money than when, than when they actually target just an ordinary employee in the organization. The number four type of vision is the voice phishing. A voice phishing uses phone call instead of emails to track target into providing personal information over the phone. One of such examples that happened recently was the Twitter hack of 2020. During that incident, a group of hackers made a phone call to a Twitter employees pretending to be from the IT department. Using this basic scam, the group managed to gain access to the organization network and internal tools. This allowed them to take over the accounts of high-profile users, including politicians, celebrity, and entrepreneurs. That still happens today. People still get a phone call from, you know, uh, supposedly friends or any other organization like that, and they are tricked into providing information over the phone they are not supposed to provide. Then the next one we are going to be talking about is type of phishing is smithing. It's a type of phishing that uses short message service. SMS, a technology that powers text messaging. Smishes cover all forms of text messaging services. That include the Apple iMessages, the WhatsApp, and all other chat medias on phone. It directs the users to malicious websites or asks them to provide personal information via text. For example, recently one of my students in a master class got an SMS, and the SMS states like this. We attempted to deliver your password, but no one was home. To reschedule, please fix it. Now, you can see the link that was put on the screen over there. So, she was asked to click on this link in order to reschedule the missed password. The first question is this. Was she expecting any password? The answer is no. So, you can see that they can come in any form. And then when we pick out this URL, we took it to the lab and then we check with one of the open source intelligence tools that we have available today and we discover that this is actually a phishing email that has been reported already by one of the security organization i'm going to be teaching you also how you can check the link as we proceed in this training there are various tools that are available out there that they are free you can actually use them to check any link that you receive before you even attempt to click on that link at all and that is going to educate you and let you know whatever the security uh, organization around the world are saying about that link because somebody must have received it at one time or the other 
and then it has been reported. So there are various mediums and various platforms where you can actually check whether the link is genuine or it is fake. Now let's turn our attention to tips to spot a phishing email. But before we discuss some of the tips that I want to discuss with you today, if you have not subscribed to this channel and you are watching this video, I want to encourage you to go ahead and subscribe now. And if you have learned something so far in this video as well, like this video and share it as well. Now let's go to the tips to spot a phishing email. The first one is suspicious email address. Check the sender name and email address. The sender name and email address should match. If there is no matching uh, with the, the, between the sender name and the email address, then that may be a phishing link. If the email address does not match the company's name, it could be a phishing mail. Okay, the second one is check the message header. That is from, so what is the source of the message that you are getting? You need to look at the header of that email or the SMS, whichever one it may be. Uh, in most cases, they can fake the header and then you are going to see the header written out as if it's actually from a genuine source. What you need to do in that case is actually to check the links. How do you check the link? You know, to know whether it is coming from the right source or the wrong source. You move your cursor on top of that email address. You are going to see the link that is actually behind the name that you are seeing in the service. That is going to help you a lot to be able to know whether that is a, you know, a phishing attempt trying to get into your system or your device over, over any links before clicking on them. If the URL does not match the description of the link, it could be a phishing site. If the link is redirecting you to another site entirely, that could be a suspicious phishing email. So take note of that. And next to that is check the message content. If the message requests personal information like credit card number or account password, it could be a phishing email. Pay attention to that. Next to that is grammar and spelling mistake. From the message content as well, if you take a look very well, you are going to see a bad grammar and spelling mistake from the message content. That is just a pointer, a kind of red alert for you to know that you need to take a critical look at the content of the mail before you act at all on name. And then if the message as well is unsolicited, you got an unsolicited message, like the example of this missing that I show you earlier on for one of my students, she's not expecting any message from any courier service and she got that message. That is example of unsolicited message. If you have that, that could be a phishing email, a phishing message coming to you. So you need to think twice before you act on it. Okay. And then the next one is suspicious attachment. The content will usually contain an attachment. So you need to be careful about that as well. So avoid opening attachment or replying. If you have a suspicious email, that is the bottom line. Don't open any attachment or reply to the message. Rather, report that to your IT department or to any official. So that is the message that we pass across to the user, to the employee. So if you are watching this video and then you are actually taking your step or learning journey into the field of cybersecurity, this is what you are going to be telling. Then, and this is what you are going to be teaching the people that are using the system in order to safeguard them from the phishing attack. Urgent or threatening language, that is another one. If you look at the content of the message as well, you are going to see something asking you to take an urgent action, urgent step. For example, if you don't do this thing now, in the next 48 hours, your account will be suspended or your order will be cancelled. Those are the kind of urgent or threatening language that you may get via phishing attempt. So you need to be careful and watch out for any urgent or threatening language in the content. If you can pay attention to all of these tips that we have discussed, definitely I'm sure that you are going to escape a lot of phishing attempts and it will not be easy for you to actually fall prey to phishing. Now note, phishing tactics have become very sophisticated over the years. Unfortunately, there is no perfect solution that prevents this attack from happening. The best solution is education. You need to be educated and the people need to be educated about phishing, their tactics and how they are evolving. That is the best approach to it. 
So there is no technological solution to prevent fishing entirely. However, there are many ways to reduce the damage from this attack when they happen. One way is to spread awareness and inform others. And that is what I'm doing with these videos. And I'd like you to share with other people as well. Spread the awareness and inform others. As a security professional, you may be responsible as well in your organization for helping others to identify forms of social engineering like phishing that we have discussed so far in this training today. More things to come under this cybersecurity training for beginners are networking fundamental, core network security and topology, how to use Wireshark and TCP done to capture packet for inspection, how to set up the virtual machine and install Kali liners. Uh, that will happen in the master class. We're going to be talking about asset risk and vulnerabilities, major cybersecurity principles that you need to know, how to use many of the free open source intelligence tools. There are tools that are available there and they are free. Then I'm going to be also taking you on Python for automating cybersecurity processes, some common cybersecurity framework and standard like the NIST and so many other. Then you're going to be learning about the technical writing and how to create a personal cybersecurity portfolio website in order to showcase the project that you are going to be working on in the course of this training. And then I will be giving you the links where you can apply for free internship with multinational. The best time to start is now because the demand for cybersecurity professional is at an all-time high. According to the UK National Cybersecurity Center, AI will likely intensify cyber attack in the next two years, particularly through the evolution of current tactics. And the cost of cyber crime is going to reach over 12 trillion globally by 2025. That is just less than a year now. That is the report from Computer Crime Research Center. So what are you waiting for? Check the description section of this video for the link to register for my cybersecurity masterclass, where you are going to get access to all the practical that we are going to be doing in this training. See you in the next lesson. Bye.